Did you miss book fairs when you were a kid? I loved jumping into the world of book fairs, being able to go and pick out new books, check out new authors, all of those fabulous things. And now we can do it live here on Amazon. Tonight, I am joined by three amazing authors. We're gonna be taking a look at four different books that might just be your new favorite read. So go ahead and let me know in the comments where you're joining me from and what your favorite genre to read is as we jump in and have today's conversation. Our very first author is Meredith Houston. She is a dear friend of ours and I am so excited to see you. Tell me all about your book. Hi, so good to be here. I'm so excited. This is so much fun. I have like great, amazing memories of book fairs as a child. Like it's one of those so things fun, you right? can just like smell in your head almost. Um, but yeah, I'm totally here to talk about the coincidence makers. And uh, this is going to be uh, one of my favorite books I've ever written. And the sequel is out just as a little plug for that too. And the third book is in the process for those of you who like a good series about some fun characters. Those are in the works. And so the coincidence makers. All right. It's basically kind of like what it sounds like, right? Coincidences are things that are actually um, governed by people in this world. And they're going to be a kind of a secret subset. It's set in the Bay Area and they are attempting to stop a bioterrorism attack. So some serious stuff, but also lots of fun. So. I love it. And we do have all of tonight's books linked down below. We've highlighted Meredith so you can grab it right now. All of these books are both in ebook and physical book form. So you can grab them in whichever version works best for you. We're going to talk all about these stories today. And I love that we've got some bioterrorist attacks going on. So <laughs> tell me more about this. Who is your main character? What do we need to know? Like, what's the deal here? Exactly. Yeah. So Amy is my main character and she is an immortal coincidence maker and she is going to have her partner who his name is Luke and the two of them have been stuck in the friend zone for like a, a very, very long time. Ooh, it's really, really hard on her. And one of those situations where she's like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do about this? Anyhow, they receive uh, this next assignment, which means they are given the job and they are said, told basically, hey, you got to stop this giant attack. It's the 4th of July. It's San Francisco. There are fireworks. There's all sorts of things going on. And Amy is like, oh my goodness, how are we even going to do this? So it requires some visits to some labs, which is my specialty to talk about because that's what I do for a living. I have bringing in some of my own experiences. Um, not that I make bioterrorism weapons okay just just go throw that out there it's not my job at all i work with dead people's dna but um <laughs> that is uh, i do have a great deal of lab experience so talk a little bit about that and definitely all sorts of other fun stuff and bringing in san francisco which is very close to where i grew up and one of my favorite places on the planet and so all sorts of references to my favorite places to eat and go and visit so if you are uh, a fan of the bay area i highly recommend it for that reason too and um, definitely a little bit of, of, you know, maybe friends to lovers maybe going on there. I don't know. I don't want to spoil anything. So uh. <laughs> I do. Let's talk more about that. <laughs> if you're just jumping in and joining us, hello and welcome. We got a lot of people hanging out with us today and we want to hear from you. Go ahead and jump into our comments and let us know what is your favorite genre to read. Every single Tuesday, we are here at 6 p.m. Eastern, hanging out with some amazing authors and introducing you to stories that you might not know about that might just be your next favorite reads. And right now, we are talking with the fabulous Meredith of The Coincidence Makers, <laughs> and her book is linked down below. You can grab that at any point. We are going to continue to talk to all of our authors throughout the course of the next hour. So drop your questions for them down below because we're happy to get them answered while we're live in real time. And Meredith, I want to know before we move on to our next author, which she'll be back, don't worry, but we got to get everybody in. How did you come up with the idea for this story? Oh my goodness. Okay. So I've always loved coincidences. I think that they're really fascinating. And okay, this is going to let on to it like the massive nerd that I am. But there was a Science Friday episode about coincidences. And it was talking about some of these weird, wild situations that are documented from around the world. And I was like sitting and listening to this. I think I was driving home from, I don't even know where I was on a road trip. And it just kind of like sparked in my imagination. Like, what if there was somebody who actually was making those things happen? Builds upon sort of things that are in a lot of my different books, which is themes of like fate and whether or not there is a purpose for all the things that happen. So kind of building on that idea of making things that are supposed to happen, happen. And um, 
that build into like the crazy weird things that have happened in the real world, right? Um, there's coincidences that just kind of blow your mind if you ever dig into that random rabbit hole. And so I very much started writing this and Amy and Luke just appeared out of nowhere and were so much fun to write. I just, I can't get enough of them. I dream about them. They are very much a part of like my life in a very strange, weird, authorly way. Um, not creepy, I promise, but you know, uh, it's good the sorts of things. And they very much um, uh, kind of took on a life of their own with the way that they also then make um, changes in the world around them that may not typically happen. So that's I love yeah, it. in a nutshell. <laughs> I love it. And we're going to chat with you again in a few minutes. Stay tuned, friends, because we're going to be getting a tour of this book in just a little bit. And we've got some super fans hanging out with us in the comments. Hello, hello from Mississippi. Lots of y'all bringing in the fans tonight. I love it. Let us know where you're joining us from and what your favorite genre is. We will be back to talk with Meredith in just a few minutes. We are going to be talking to another author right now. I am so excited to bring Sophia Aves up on the screen. She's going to be telling us all about her story. Sophia, what story did you bring for us? Hello! Um, no, I've got to get my lefts and rights organised here. Um, I'm an Aussie author and I still can't get that in. There we go, middle of the screen. We're good. Okay, so I'm an Aussie author and I write romance. I write all sorts of romance. Um, I, they say stay in your lane. I can't help it. It's just everybody for everyone and it's all steamy. So be warned straight up. This is happy mum moments. Um, Collision is the first book in a new series called Blue Blooded Brothers. It is complete. It is available to read on KU. It's in paperback. It's all the things. Um, it's it's an Aussie cop romance set in Melbourne. Um, so if you've been down to Melbourne at the moment, it's a bit of a uh, bit of a mess down there with with COVID. But we are. Um, oh, I've got a child incursion there. But we we. We have a beautiful city down there, and it's just a, it's, it's a fabulous, fabulous location. So, Collision is about um, a. It was actually it, it was um, a girlfriend actually got rear-ended by a cop, and he asked her out on a date. And absolutely horrifyingly, I then wrote a book about that, as you do, because I just thought that was just such a, 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 an interesting thing. Like, it was just so different. So. There is a lot of forced proximity in this one. There is a lot of undercover work. I've interviewed cops all over the world um, and spent many hours talking to them. Um, we do so. We've got Cal is a um, is the head of a task force, and he has some serious demons. And he has been chasing this guy for years and years and years. And when he finally meets Miller, and she is just this gorgeous author who is painting a giant hamster that belongs to his aunt, um, <laughs> then they fall in love. And he thinks that she is a spy from the bad guy. So that all comes out very, very quickly into the book. Um, and she was involved in a hold up. This book, um, I started to write this book three years ago when I first started writing again after a massive hiatus um, away from writing. And originally this book was originally called Cops and Robbers. <laughs> you wouldn't think that we could actually make up <laughs> fabulous names for these things, but yeah. <laughs> Here we go. So Cops and Robbers, I was going to be, do you guys remember um, Romancing the Stone? Um, there was Joan Wilder was the main character from this. This might be going back away for everyone. But Joan Wilder was the main character and she was a romance author. And ever since I've been six years old, I wanted to be Joan Wilder. So this book took me into Joan Wilder territory. Love it. <laughs> I love it. That's fantastic. And we've got a lot of great people jumping into our comments. Hello from Seattle. We've got people from Northern California. Yes, yes. We've got <laughs> South Texas and Scotland. Oh, my goodness. We've got so many fabulous people joining. Make sure you invite your friends to the party because oh we don't come to the party alone. So let everybody know we're here hanging out. Send that link to them. And make sure you check out the links down below. We are connecting all of the savings books, and they are in ebook and physical form. So no matter how you like to read, we have all of the options for you today. And I am so excited for you to take a look at these stories and these authors. Now, I love, I love that this is a cop story. I love that it was originally going to be called Cops and Rappers. I love it so much. That's hilarious. <laughs> and I love that we get steamy in this because I know that a lot, a lot of people are looking for the steamy content. So y'all, you're welcome. We brought it for you tonight. We're excited to talk more about this. And I want to know, who is this book the perfect fit for? <laughs> 
Uh, I would say if you read Suzanne Stoker, Janie Crouch, you are going to love this. This this has got that that same sort of suspense and it really draws you in. And then it's got those steamy aspects, which look, come on, we've got to have it. We've got to have a little bit yes, of steamy absolutely. in there just to, just to make it all work have it. That's That's what we're here for. You know we're all here for that anyway. <laughs> and if you have not checked it out, link is down below, friends. Go ahead and hit that up. <laughs> Amazon is watching and they want to know if you are excited about today's book fair. So jump in my comments. Let me know who do you want to see on upcoming episodes of Book Fair Live. We are here every single Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, bringing new authors, surprise secret authors, to introduce you to their books. They come to pitch their books to you. You get to be the judge. Is this the next best fit for you? We want to hear who you want to see and what genres you want to see next. So go ahead and let us know in the comments. And Sophia, I need to know, we talked a little bit about your inspiration for this. Your friend got hit by the cop and then or got hit and then the cop asked them out. But like break this down for us a little more because this is a fun way to write a book. <laughs> Some weird things happen and we just grab those moments and off we run with them and look it's I, I didn't go any further into her story but yeah absolutely it look collision is definitely about that that critical meet cute where you know she gets run up up the back of the car he pulls her out of the car she's covered in red paint because she's an artist and he thinks that he's killed her you know <laughs> he thinks that she's all damaged and she's sitting there in the gutter saying I feel like a troll up and I'm just staring into his eyes you know and it, it's it's just this this moment where, you know you can sort of go okay yeah yeah no we can do this <laughs> so. I love it everyone is laughing so hard right now this Y'all, not only do you get the steaminess, but you get the funny stuff too. This is great. I'm loving this. And we're going to learn more about Collision in just a little bit. We're going to take a book tour. So we actually get to see inside of the story. So Sophia will be back in just a few minutes. And if you've got questions for her, now is the time to go ahead and drop those so that we can get them answered for you. We've got more people joining us from Colorado, from Georgia. Y'all, bring it tonight. I love that you're all here and that you're bringing your friends to the party. Make sure you're clicking on those books so that Amazon knows that this is a good and valuable live stream that is bringing incredible content to you because our job here and our goal here is to level up these live streams so much so that we are the top live stream on Amazon Live. In fact, if you go to Amazon's homepage, their very first tab on the toolbar is live streams now. So we're going to be live here every single Tuesday. I'm also doing live streams throughout the week so that you can learn about technology. You can learn about fashion and beauty. You can learn about lifestyle things. We've got so many things related to the book world and outside of the book world here happening on the Amazon page. So if you have not given me a follow, what are you doing? Make sure you give me that follow right now so that you don't miss out on any of the fun and you can see all of the recaps for the things you've missed in the past. We are bringing up our third author of the night. She is coming to tell us all about her story. Her name is Kay Thomas. Ma'am, tell me about your book. I got you. <laughs> Wasn't working for me. All right. That's okay. I got you. My very first book. This is the debut debut book to my series. It is Time to Wake. So this is a new adult paranormal supernatural thriller romance of course because what's the fun without it and it really is a self journey type story right so it's written in first person you follow the main character as she kind of deals with being a little bit of an introvert trying to just live her life while she has this little side habit of sucking out people's souls. Uh, as you go through this journey, you get to experience her meeting friends, getting this connection with a new neighbor, somebody that she realizes that she can actually have a very heartwarming, heartwarming friendship with, big sister vibes, you know, close friends, found family, all of that good jazz. Um, she does have a ride or die best friend who is her high school bestie that is her exact opposite, right? He is an extrovert, live streaming, video gaming, kind of locally famous uh, that, you know, really pushes her, supports her. He's the reason why she has, you know, makes money and makes a living because she is an introverted, hidden webtoon artist. So uh, she, yes, this is 
you know, definitely, uh, you know, very talented, but very shy main character. And, you know, of course, comes and enters the romantic interest, who is absolutely full of himself, kind of annoying, can't stop, can't stop herself from liking him anyway, and really has no idea why. Uh, so here she goes with this just band of new friends, discovering this joy of actually having friends and what it means to get out there and do things, and then girls start going missing. So of course, what does this band of random people do? They decide to go hunt for the killer. What, what, what else are you going to do, right? What else? Uh, you know, <laughs> How else are you going to leverage that live stream power? So she and her friends start going on the hunt. The love interest is there as well. Of course, you don't really know. Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Is he worth the time? We don't know yet, right? So we're discovering that along with her as we go through this story. So it's full of a little bit of supernatural suspense, probably a two flame of heat for that uh, sweet romance, a little bit of stuff going on, at least until the second book. Um, and then also a lot of friendship right and a lot of the banter and the sarcasm and just the sass that you get in a good group of friends so that is you know a little bit of her journey and um hope that you all can have some time to find out what it's about and if you have not read this story before we've got a links for you down below all of tonight's books are both in paperback or hardcover and ebook form so you can grab the physical copy or the Eva copy, whatever works best for you. And I got them linked and featured down below. Give those links a click because Amazon wants to know that we're here getting the clicks tonight. So help a girl out. We want to make sure that we're answering your questions and we're getting a lot of love for Kay in the comments right now. Love from Texas. Wonderful book. Um, and we've got some questions coming in. Beautiful. We're going to get those answered in just a minute. I am so excited to see all of these questions and I have to know who this book is perfect for. I know it's for a YA audience, but like, who is the ideal? It's going to love this story. But this is definitely upper teens, early 20s, new adult, because there is a little bit of heat, nothing too explicit. Um, it gets a little hotter as we get to the second book that'll be coming out in about a month on Amazon. But, you know, it is definitely targeted to someone who likes character development, right? You're really there for that relationship building, that friendship building, getting to know all of those people that we're introducing into the book and a little bit of Easter egg hunt and, you know, supernatural thriller just to make it a little fun. I love it. Now, what was your inspiration for writing this story? This story is something that I had started as a teenager. So one of the characters, not the main character, because I, I cannot do the inside of a, a teenager's head at this point, right? But the, one of the main characters is a teenager um, who used to be the actual central character of the story. And it had come from, I used to have very vivid dreams and I had some nightmares that I would journal and they just made a very good start to a story, right? They made you know this very intriguing, they could link together, who would be doing this? How would you figure it out? Kind of thought process, you know, really as I was like, why am I dreaming this? What is going on? Um, and I started the story. And so one of many, many stories that had kind of just sat there on the shelf for a long time and then got reimagined um, and given a little extra love. So, you know, it's just a long time in the making. I love that it's a reimagining of your original story. That is so much fun. And as somebody who writes retellings, <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. So <laughs> we're just going to leave it with that. We are going to be back with Kay in just a couple of minutes. We're going to get a book tour. I'm really excited for this one and to learn more all about these stories. If you have questions, now is a fantastic time to go ahead and drop those. And if you're just jumping on, here are a couple things you need to know. Number one, we are live every single Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern here on Amazon Live to introduce you to a handful of new secret authors every single week. I don't tell you who's coming. So you got to show up to the party to see who's going to be joining us. Some of our authors will be running sales on their books. Some of them will be doing extra fun things. We might even introduce some giveaways in the not too distant future. And you get to meet all these people to see if their book is your next favorite read. If you have not met me before, hi, hello. I'm author K.M. Robinson, multi-time bestseller. I write in the YA space, N.A. space, and I might be branching out soon, so stay tuned for that. Today, we're talking about my book, Cinderella. Cinderella is a retelling of Cinderella, where Cinderella is an assassin out to hunt the prince. But don't worry, 
because he's after her too. We have our Cinderella working for a master assassin whose job it is to go to the ball where the prince has newly become engaged to a foreign princess. And his job is to take out the king and his son, the prince. Now, Cinderella, our assassin, is going to be helping She's going to be a distraction, and unfortunately, she decides that the foreign princess does not deserve to be caught in the crossfire, and instead of obeying her master's commands, she tries to save the princess. She runs through the hall with her, shoves her into a closet to protect her, and unfortunately, the prince is hot on her heels. As he's running toward her, he trips and falls, the knife dragging across her very interestingly shaped shoe and cutting her foot. Now, much to his horror, her face begins to tear off because she was wearing a nanobot mask that changed the shape of her face. Therefore, nobody knows what she actually looks like. And when she was injured, the nanobots fly off of her face and rush down her body to form a new shoe, leaving her shoe behind, you guessed it, with our prince. She runs out of the building safe. And unfortunately, the next morning, as she's going to find her master assassin, she runs into the prince, who does not recognize her because her face is now different. The nanobots are not there to protect her anymore. He does not realize who she is. But when he finds out her particular skills of, you know, forcing people to do things or calming people down so that things don't happen, he forces her along on the journey on the hunt for the would-be assassin woman he doesn't realize is three inches away from him. So to recap, our Cinderella is still on the hunt. And so is our prince. And now they are working together and on a mission to destroy each other. And only one knows who the other is. It is a very interesting story. And it's actually a novella. This is one of my short stories. So you can actually read this very, very quickly. It is fast paced. And instead of the traditional characters, we've got a master assassin as our stepmother. We have an assassin as our Cinderella. We do have a fairy god brother who designs all of her wardrobe and her gear, her technology. So we've got this fun brotherly twist on our fairy godmother. And we've got a whole bunch of other people in our cast that might just bring the sarcasm and snark as we go through this tale. And I can't get too much more into it because of spoilers, but this is how we introduce our story. We set our scene and we go off on a mission to hunt each other. If you've got questions, we would love to get them answered. Go ahead and hit those up down below. I'm going to switch this to feature Cinderella right now by K.M. Robinson. And you can check out all of these links down below. All of our books tonight are in ebook and in physical book form. So you can check out each and every one of them because we want to make sure that you can get your hands on them and you don't even have to leave our live stream. So we're going to do book tours in just a minute. We're going to do all the fun, fabulous things, but I have a couple more things that I got to answer because that's kind of what we do here. So for me, the best fit for this book is anybody who loves retellings. If you are a fan of those big name retellings, fans have named me the queen of retellings because I have written a million of them in just a couple of years. So if you are a fan of Cinderella original story, if you're a fan of the sci-fi realm, if you love technology and nanobots, and if you were a fan of very dangerous, very witty, very sarcastic women with incredible fashion senses, I got you covered. Today, I've got you covered with Syndrome, but there's lots of great options as well. And as you can see, we've got this beautiful, beautiful story with the pretty shoe on the cover, which we're gonna talk more about in just a little bit. And like I said, I'm a retellings author. I don't exclusively write retellings, but the majority of what I write is retelling. So I get to talk all about the fairy tales, the legends, the lore, the myths that you grew up with and didn't realize you didn't actually know. And so I knew I wanted to tell a retelling of Cinderella, but I didn't know how. I had to really think about what I could do to twist it because it's a very popular retelling. Everybody does it. I needed a big spin on it. And we have an Assassin Cinderella. And the cool thing is after my book came out, several more came out with Assassin Cinderella's and none of us knew we were all writing the same topic. All of them are so different and so, so good. So if you decide this is a storyline you like, there's more. There's different versions by different authors. So you can check out all the Assassin Cinderella's when you are ready, if you are loving it. I'm going to jump into my comments and I need all of you to let me know what is your favorite genre and what do you want to see more of on our live streams while we are doing our book fair lives every single Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Let me know in the comments. Um, we've got some fabulous people reading books in one sitting. We love it. 
Um, you read it so fast. I love it. And y'all, thank you for the follow. And thank you for the stars. We appreciate when you are hitting that star button. That tells Amazon that we're doing something good and they should bump us up on those pages. Remember, our goal with these live streams is to get on the top of the Amazon page. We want to be the end all be all so that you can come and meet new books every single week. And we can give a space to authors to market their books without having to pay hundreds of dollars to get ads on some of those newsletters that you love so much. So we're trying to open this up and make this huge for our authors, but we can't do it without your help. Hit the follow button, hit the share button with that link, and then check out those books down below. Every time you buy a book, you're supporting the authors and you're supporting the book fair live streams. We are going to jump in and we're going to talk with our authors more. And I appreciate all the comments and all the stars that you are giving us. We're going to bring Meredith back up. We're going to talk more about her book and we're moving into the section where we're getting tours of our stories. So Meredith, we're talking all about the coincidence makers. Remind us, what is your book about? The Coincidence Makers is about Amy and Luke, who um, are going to be making coincidences happen in San Francisco. Particularly, they have to stop a bioterrorism attack. And uh, sometimes, you know, they may have their job of making coincidences, but some coincidences seem more like making a miracle happen. So uh, you're set for a good friends to lovers uh, and also a little bit of a paranormal sprinkle thrown in there, uh, which is going to be uh, it's actually one of my favorite parts of the cover to kind of jump in a little bit. Uh, <laughs> um, here with our book tour sort of thing um, and that is kind of the fuzzy image here so i always think of this as amy who um because of their abilities to make coincidences happen she and luke uh, have the ability to go invisible to each, everybody but each other so uh it's all sorts of fun something that amy is probably not used for the most appropriate resource reasons over the years mm -hmm. i think we all have things that they might think uh you might do <laughs> which she's probably done um so you get behind <laughs> the scenes tour of that sort of thing um but definitely they live kind of the the behind the scenes life and but have a lot of fun making things happen um around the world and so you get to hear about some of their different exploits with other big events in history but also very much this bioterrorism attack that they have to stop so i love it and i want to hear from you in the comments if you had the power to be invisible mm -hmm. what would you use it for please be respectful and responsible and know where the line is when you're answering this question. <laughs> oh my gosh. I totally want to hear your reasons though. All right. So <laughs> PG-13, let us know in the comments below. I am dying to read this. I love it. I yeah, love to it. Totally. I, you know, I did a little poll like a million years ago on my blog about, um, back in the blog days. Yeah. Um, uh, on like what, thing people most wanted to be able to do like what superpower they would get and i was shocked at how many people like it was literally a landslide in the invisible thing and i was like really that wouldn't be my personal first choice like teleportation 100 percent but like i was really shocked at how many people said invisibility and that it must have somehow or another like through my subconscious worked its way into the coincidence makers so uh it was it's kind of a fun idea <laughs> that is really fun i absolutely love it remind us again before we take our book tour who is this absolutely perfect for so if you are looking for something that is going to have a, a dash of paranormal romance, but also some speculative fiction thrown in there with a little bit of a kind of a thriller aspect, that is your best fit. Uh, you're, you're my best fit. Um, some other comparative titles that you um, might have read would be um, the Discovery of Witches trilogy. Um, I guess there's a fourth one now um, as well. Uh, but those main books um, by Deborah Harkness are a, probably a really good fit if you you have enjoyed those, which is like the real world with a sprinkle of paranormal, uh, maybe a, a heavy dash of paranormal might be a better way to describe that. Um, but very much those are some things that you're going to enjoy here. Um, my paranormal characters may not be your typical run of the mill ones. Um, I tend to make up my own <laughs> that are not like your, your witches, vampires, shapeshifters, that sort of thing, even though I love them, don't get me wrong, but I like to experiment and create something a little bit different, which is what the coincidence makers are but very much um, also some sort of, of a paranormal being that you would very much enjoy reading about with a little bit of romance tossed in too. So. I love it. And we're getting comments coming in saying people are buying the books. I am so excited. Mom of two boys, thanks for your purchase. We appreciate it. I hope that you love this book so dang much. And if you do, Amazon likes it when you leave reviews and so do authors. I'm just saying you should oh my gosh. do that. 
and let us know come back to more book fair lives and let us know and make sure you hit up meredith on our social and let her know uh kdm also just bought this and mom of two says that she missed our rundown earlier so she's glad that you're back the good news is with book fair live if you miss something the authors are coming back they get a couple of different times to hang out with us and talk all about their books so this is an excellent time to drop questions down below speaking of which we definitely have a question we are going to get answered when i scroll up yes here we go what was one of your favorite spoiler free scenes to write narrative oh my gosh that's such a good question um spoiler free Ooh, that's a really hard one uh okay so um let's see that okay the favorite one is definitely spoilery so i'm gonna have to go with second favorite and um that is going to be uh no that one's also kind of spoilery okay <laughs> i'm sorry i'm like sitting here going okay that's okay. Okay. Um, how about, uh, it's actually going to be something that has worked its way um, into a, a little bit of a prequel for this. Um, and that is going to be available on my website. Um, but there was a scene at the very beginning, which is based on an actual real life coincidence that I've completely reworked. And that is where Luke and Amy have to get two people to meet um, on vacation in a separate country and they've never met before. And it actually turns out to be a father and his son. Um, and so uh, it was a really kind of uh, difficult assignment for them to make happen. So a coincidence to have happen. Um, and they have to do, have all these working parts, but then they get to watch this dad come around the corner um, in the jungle. They're out on like a tour sort of thing. And he meets his son for the first time in this crazy wild setting um and that was a really really fun scene to write uh it did not make it into the final copy though weirdly enough but that is you know something that happens regularly however it is very much on my website for anybody who would like to catch it there <laughs> so um other scenes my very first top favorite very spoilery so i'm going to avoid that i love it we need to go on a book tour so mm -hmm. show us your cover your back cover the fun stuff on the inside show this baby off what do we need to see absolutely okay so coincidence makers i'm going to switch to the side so you can't see my box of random crud in the background um i'm in my work <laughs> office i'm a professor by day so all sorts of weirdness all right um so the coincidence makers i love this front cover i have to be honest as i said amy totally um is the person who i envision as this kind of shadowy figure working in the background to make a ma magic happen um and then even fate needs a little help is my tagline um so uh nice fun just plain old uh it's fine there, but my background, uh, my back cover here, um, which of course has to have the summary. Like I hate when you have like no summary in the back. Like what is up with that? I, I don't understand. Um, one of the other favorite things then is going to be some of the interior design is just, I think, absolutely astounding using the very pretty front cover and uh, the raindrops, which also is going to be something that I think is a great element and fits in well, particularly with the fogginess of San Francisco. So um, using that same image to really beautify the different chapters as we go through this very, very nice uh, book here that's going to uh, discuss some you know, all sorts of craziness that individuals were taking part in. I mean, what would you do if you were going to be able to go invisible? So I'm hoping that there's some comments on there someplace. <laughs> we did not get a single comment yet, but I know everybody's watching because we get in the stars. Guys, let me know. What would you do if you had the power to be invisible? Again, we're keeping it PG-13, y'all. But <laughs> tell us, what would you do? I know. I know who's here. I know who's here hanging out with us. If you haven't given me a follow yet, please do. Thank you so much, NC Gentry, for hanging out and giving us that follow. We're here every single Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Eastern, hanging out with some amazing authors just like Meredith. We're getting tours of books. They're pitching their stories to you, and you might just find your next favorite story that you've never heard of before. You're welcome. We're so excited to have this platform every single week. And in addition to just talking about books here on the platform, we're also talking about technology. We're talking about fashion and beauty. We're talking about lifestyle and all the good things. So make sure you are giving that follow because I'm live all the time here on Amazon. And the more we do on Amazon, the more we can level up to do more things for you, which means more giveaways, more fun things, more secret events, 
I'm excited. I got big plans. So bring your friends, share the link, and check out the books down below. Uh, Meredith, one more time, who does need, uh, who does, who needs to check out this book? Who, who does this book be perfect for it? English. Is exactly. Fun, fans of speculative fiction, if you enjoy a little bit of a paranormal, a little bit of romance, and a good splash of a thriller, this is the book for you. Perfect. And we will be back with Meredith and the Coincidence Makers in just a couple of minutes. We are going to be chatting with our other authors tonight. If you have not followed, if you have not shared the link to bring your friends to the party, and if you have not checked out the books, now is the time. We're going to bring Sophia back up on stage to talk all about her story. I am so excited because it was so funny the last time we talked to her a few minutes ago. <laughs> Sophia, welcome back. Tell us about your book collision. first of a Aussie cop romance series called Blue-Blooded Brothers. There are five main books in this series and a couple of little novellas. There's a Christmas one that I threw in there as well that just launched a few months ago. Um, they're all available to read on Kindle Unlimited and they are available in print and ebook. Um, Collision focuses on Miller and Cal um, who meet when Cal rear ends Miller, but it is the second time that they've met. So I'm not going to go any further into that because spoilers. Um, but this is a great book for anyone who loves romantic suspense, um, J.D. Robb, anyone that you want to read uh, a cop romance, uh, Force Proximity is an absolute favourite of mine. You'll find it in a lot of my books. I think that's coming back from my 80s. I uh, read a lot of Joanna Lumley when I was quite a, when I was a teen and I think that's, that's just sort of come into the writing. So this fabulous little book was originally called Cops and Robbers, very original title, um, but it, just, it follows the path of five boys. So each book is... Uh, different cop romance um so it does follow different characters it is dual perspective first person past tense so you do get both the female and the male perspective I do tend to write from the male perspective a lot more I don't know why um military wife so maybe I just see an awful lot of it <laughs> a lot of testosterone but really enjoyed writing these and just getting really into into the psyche of everybody so these books follow a manhunt for Logan Wade, who has really quite destroyed all these boys' lives. It does have a fair bit of PTSD. We cover that quite heavily in different forms. And I was in book three before I realised I was doing it until somebody left me a beautiful review and said, thank you for explaining it so well and just doing a great job of, of, of going through what it really is like to live with PTSD. We have that here, military wife, returned veteran, husband. Um, we've been living with it for nearly 20 years. So I really do understand this stuff. And it is just so much fun to get into these guys' heads and really see all the horrible things that can happen to them when you are hunted by a madman. Um, I mean, as terrible as that is, but it is <laughs> the horrible things that we do to our characters, right? They tell you to kill your darlings. I don't kill anybody, spoiler, but these guys are put through the ringer quite a bit. Oh, my so. goodness. Well, that actually brings us perfectly, <laughs> into, this brings us perfectly into a question that someone asked in the comments. How hard is it to say goodbye to your characters when you end a book or a series? So for you, is this something that's hard to do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it, this is really, really tough stuff. Um, I... <laughs> When I get to the end of each one, I'm like, oh my God, I'll never, I'll never be able to write another book. I can't write about anybody else. I love them so much. I've got to stay with them. They've got to have more stories. And then you start writing the new book and you're like, oh, this is my new favorite. I love these people. I can't get away from them. <laughs> and it happens every single book. I got to the end, Liam's book. Liam is an overarching character in, in Blue Blooded Brothers. He gets a couple of stories. I'm actually writing an extra one for a brand new box set. Um, and when I finished off his story, uh, people said that they love the new character and his banter in the final book so much that they've asked me to write a whole new series and include both of them in there and that's what we've done. So there is actually a whole new spin-off series. So, no, you don't actually get away from these characters. They stay with you, they live with you. And Liam has been whinging at me for a whole year to write his book and now suddenly he has six. So <laughs> there's all these little spin-off moments. Um, but, but writing The Blue Blooded Brothers, as much as it's cop romance and, yes, warning, heavy warning, it is super steamy, especially book three. Oh, my God, be careful. My mum's reading it at the moment. She's 76 years old. And I asked her and I gave her a heads up and I said, mum, there is, there's S in here, okay? It is a super steamy book. There is two chapters of it. She said, oh, no, that's okay. I enjoy those bits. <laughs> I can never go home. <laughs> I can never go home anymore. <laughs> that is every author's like panic moment, isn't it? <laughs> I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Look, actually, my mum isn't too bad. It's if my mother-in-law read it, then I'd be. It's I, a no. thing. <laughs> we can 
can I'll do, we can do a whole family. episode just about our family discovering our books or reading our books. Like that's going to be an off Amazon yeah. thing. Come hang out with us over on my YouTube yeah. page or my Instagram. We're going to do this one of these things. It'll yes. be fun. Speaking of which, follow me on social <laughs> at KM Robinson Books, where I give you updates yeah. for these live streams <laughs> and the book fair live events. Mm -hmm. You've not checked out the links down below. We've got the book in ebook and in physical form. So no matter how you like to read, we got you covered with this one. And mom of two boys, who happens to be our MVP for buying books tonight, has just made a purchase. We are so excited that you've got two books this evening. And if you have grabbed books today, we would love to shout you out. Go ahead and let us know down in the comments <laughs> below. I think we need a book tour. So, Sophia, show us Collision. What do we need to know? Yeah. Yeah. Readers. It's got that sort of thriller and suspense sort of look to it. And, you, you know, this is the sort of cup that you're going to see on anything that is the steamy romance. It is absolutely perfect for readers of uh, J.D. Robb, um, Janie Crouch, uh, Suzanne Stoker, Suzanne Stoker, um, Kay Bromberg. She's another one up there. In fact, I'm writing in her Driven World as well. Um, down on the spine, this is my little feather. It's on all my books. It's my personal imprint. Um, and, of course, tagline there. Okay, so here is about five cops set in the coffee capital of the world, which is Melbourne, just in case you needed to know. Um, we do have some beautiful coffees down there. It's a, it's a fabulous city and it was just the perfect place. I actually picked um, Melbourne from my reader group. So when I was starting to write this book, I thought, no, hang on, we need to, we need to find out where you guys want this set. So in my reader group, we put up a little poll um, and said, do we want it set in Australia or America? I was open to it. I thought, no, this is, you know, wh where do you guys want it set? So they picked Australia. Then we went through a couple of Sydney cities. I live near Brisbane. We've had Sydney and there in Melbourne. Um, and they picked Melbourne. So that's where the story ended up being set. Uh, this is, oh, that's my two year old in the background. So this is quite a hefty read. There is a fair bit in this as well. And then inside, hang on, changing sides. Okay, so my beautiful formatter, Rosie, made these up for me. And each book does look the same. So Jill's perspective, first person, all the way through the whole series and third, uh, sorry, um, past tense. <laughs> okay, I've run out of breath there. <laughs> Fantastic. There we I go. love these walkthroughs. The tours, definitely my favorite part of these conversations. And KDM just got this one too. Yes, good choices. We make fabulous life choices here at Book Fair Live. I told you, these events are designed so that you can meet your new favorite authors that you <laughs> haven't met yet. And we do this every single week. Hit the buttons down below. We got you covered when it comes to amazing stories every single week. And I introduce you to surprise authors. That's right. I don't tell you who's going to show up. And you get to meet these fabulous people every single week. And I need to know what genres you want to see more of during our live book fair events. And if you did not check out last week's, we had some amazing authors on. You can go and watch the replay on my Amazon page. So all you got to do is scroll the page and you can check out the live streams from previous episodes. This is our second episode. So we got one down under our belt that you can be checking out linked down below for you. And you can be letting us know what you want to see more of. Sophia, remind us who is this the perfect fit for before we move on to Kay? Mm -hmm. If you like cop romances, romantic suspense, um, if you like NCIS, if you've been, I've been a watcher for years, please, you know, this will be a great read for you. Um, I, I, I absolutely adore, absolutely adore that series. Um, okay, back on track, Suzanne Stoker, um, Janie Crouch, J.D. Robb, um, anything that's a cop police procedural. We do go into the police procedural bit a little bit because I did do a lot of research for these books, but it is not heavy on the technical stuff. It is heavy on the emotion and what happens when these guys are put in horrible situations and pretty much the women who save them. So lots of I love it. We're going to hang out after this live stream. <laughs> we just became best friends. We're going to see you again yes. in a couple of minutes, Sophia. <laughs> we are going to bring Kay Thomas up. She's going to tell us all about her story. I am so excited to get a tour of this gorgeous book. Kay, tell us what your book's about. Hello there. This is Time to Wake. It is the first in the paranormal supernatural thriller romance series. The second book will be coming out in about a month and available on Amazon. This book is currently on Amazon in ebook, soft, hardcover, and on Audible. So if you haven't caught it yet, it's waiting for you. 
Uh, this story is first person. That's my personal favorite to read, so therefore my personal favorite to write. First person point of view, it follows a roughly 20 year old girl who happens to have a very pesky habit of sucking people's souls. Not very social because that's a little uncomfortable. And so she tends to hang out in her house, avoiding most people besides her high school bestie, who is her exact opposite. And he is a social media expert, streamer, kind of locally famous gamer who kind of helps her survive, right, and navigate the world. Um, and of course, in her home is nothing less than Benny the ghost. So the only other person she really spends a lot of time with can't really talk. Uh, and so she you know, goes through this journey of finding new friends, meeting someone she really clicks with, gets this great found family sister vibe going um, with this new character that gets introduced and then, you know, quickly gets suckered by her bestie, his name is Vincent, into going on a hunt for missing girls who are, you know, going missing in the neighborhood, in the nearby, you know, areas. And so, of course, that's the best use of all of their time and the safest thing for a bunch of 20-year-olds and teenagers to be doing, uh, naturally, right? And so, as they're doing this, they also run into a what becomes her romantic interest. And he is a kind of obnoxious, but sort of adorable, typical guy that she runs into that she is attracted to and can't quite figure out why. Um, and you know, then she has to battle the, is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Where's this really going? Can I even do this when I would probably kill him? You know, minor <laughs> issues to a relationship. Uh, so you're kind of battling that, you're learning about that suspense, you're figuring out how that suspense plays into her kind of supernatural powers and what it means, as she sort of discovers what that means and, and, and how it relates to the things and the events that are happening around her. Um, it is a new adult, so a little tiny bit of steam, only about two flames, gets a little bit hotter in the next book. You can blame a few of the people, I think, down in those comments for that. <laughs> Yes, and, uh, you know, really just, really just a fun adventure of friends, a little bit of banter. She does have a little bit of an unfortunate name. She goes by her, her legal name is Solis, which is French, given to her by her grandmother. So you also get a lot of fun banter as her friends all lovingly decided to nickname her Sin. So lots of friendship, lots of fun, a little bit of thriller, suspense, and kind of a bit of romance going on in that slow burn, uh, you know, kind of almost enemies to lovers. I love it. And your fans are going crazy in the comments. <laughs> they are loving on the story and your soft cover. Um, and thank you, Brandy, for the follow. We appreciate you guys following here. We're here every single Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern, bringing you introductions to authors you might not have met yet who might just become your next favorite author. We've got all of tonight's books links down below, so make sure you hit up all of those books. You can click and purchase right from the live stream. You don't even have to leave us. And you can get it in either ebook or in physical book form. And some of them are an audiobook as well. So we're really excited because every single week we're bringing you brand new reads that you can be checking out. So if you've not followed, follow. If you've not shared the link with your bestie, what y'all do and bring your friends to the party and make sure you are leaving us some comment love down below with your questions, your comments. And if you're buying these books, please let us know. I want to shout you out. I am here to shout you out to the world. So go ahead and let us know that you're here following and checking out those books down below. Um, we've got, oh, people setting reminders, Montana. Yes, make sure you set the reminders. We're here every single uh, Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, introducing you to new authors. And if you want my other live streams on YouTube, on Instagram, and on TikTok, I'll be telling you all about those before we end today's conversation as well. Okay. Tell me, who are these books absolutely perfect for? They are new adult, borderline, so definitely on the upper end of that teenage range, early 20s. Somebody who likes a little bit of supernatural to get lost in, a little bit of slow romance, um, and a little love for cliffhangers, because the end of the book, it definitely leaves you waiting for that next one coming out in about a month. Uh, so it is, you know, fun, doesn't take itself too seriously, has some definite tension, you know, and really just lots of friendship building, love building, just that relationship kick if you got to have it. 
I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm so excited because we are about to take a tour of your book. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and show us your cover, your back cover, and that beautiful interior of your story and tell us everything that we need to know all about your book. All right. Well, this lovely book is a uh, time to wake. It is a soft cover because we are holding these up all night, making sure that you can get a good view and don't miss what to buy. Um, and so I picked the lighter thing to hold up. So it is definitely a title centric cover, which I have to say, I am loving that everyone here tonight is sharing their more title centric or just little hints from inside the story on the cover. Those are my favorite covers. So this is a very simple, very simple title centric cover because the background does have a major point to one of the plots in the story. The title is a major point to some of the lore that goes on. It's a lot of relationship to time, passage of time, maybe a little bit of past life thing going on. Um, so there's a lot in there that, you know, is hidden just within the title. So inside the book you get a beautiful cover page replica from my title page so it's carried in in black and white this one's autographed because it might be going to someone shortly after this and once you get into the chapters it carries very simple but carries on that title text from the front so same formatting you know soft covers just for fun um just something to give it just a little bit more love on that inside so of course there is the blurb on the back which gives you a little sense of our fun uh your fun main character and everything that's going on there and not too many spoilers but just a little bit so you understand what lore that you're getting into uh, these books are based on a nephilim lore which is something that in my world means that my main character has a tendency to suck energy out of other people which is really kind of a little bit of their soul makes her a bit of a dangerous friend to keep around if you aren't the right type of person so these books uh, definitely focus on passage of time the next books in the series do the same and have a little bit of fun with the titles i love it so much fun and your friend or your fans and friends all the fabulous people down in the comments below are just going crazy. They have been wondering how to pronounce your MC's name. They are <laughs> excited that they don't have to wait too much longer for the next book. So y'all, we are loving your questions. Keep them coming in. Drop those comments. And if you're not hitting that star button, that's like giving us hearts in Instagram. Y'all got to be click, click, click on that button to let Amazon know they need to start paying attention to Book Bear Live so that we can get on the top of the Amazon live stream page so we can build this up so big and so fabulous that our authors don't have to worry about begging and pleading to pay hundreds of dollars for ads on those newsletter companies that were really, really cool about promoting all of us, but are really, really hard to get into. So let's make life easy for our authors and build this baby up. Let everyone know we're here every single week. Hit those alarms if you haven't and click the books. Buy them if you haven't read them yet. Down below, we've got everything linked and we want Amazon to know that we are here live, active and making the sales here on Amazon Live. We are going to be talking to all of our authors again in just a moment. But before we do, we got to get into a conversation about my book because I can't just be here hosting, right? I got to let you know that I write books as well. So I'm multi-time bestselling author Kay and Robinson. Today, we're talking about Cinderella. If you didn't hear me before, I'm the queen of retellings. I don't just write retellings, but a lot of my books are really dark, twisted retellings. And Cinderella is a story all about Cinderella as an assassin. So she is off to the ball with the master assassin. She is working under him as an apprentice and her job is to distract the king and the prince at the prince's engagement party to the foreign princess. While she's there, she gets her eye on the princess and realizes this is actually a good human. I don't want her to get hurt in the crossfire because the master assassin doesn't care. And therefore she goes and rescues the princess, races down the hall with her, shoves her in a closet and takes off. Unfortunately, the prince is hot in pursuit and not just hot. And he is racing along as he falls. He splits her foot open around this very interestingly shaped shoe. And because she is now injured, the nanobot mask that had been covering her face flies off of her face, much to the horror of the prince, races down her body and forms a new shoe, leaving this shoe behind. The next morning, she runs into the prince and he does not recognize her because she no longer has the nanobot mask from earlier. And so when he discovers she has talents and particular traits that would be helpful in searching for the would-be assassin woman, he forces her along on the mission to help her find herself. 
He doesn't know it, but she sure knows who he is. So now we've got Cinderella assassin out to murder the prince, and he's hunting her too. He just doesn't know it's her. We've got a lot of swoon in this one. We've got a lot of sass. We've got a lot of amazing fashion. We even have a really cool fairy god brother developing her tech and her wardrobe so that she can go do all the horrible things she probably shouldn't be doing. And we get to see all sorts of really interesting twists and take, takes on this Cinderella story. So I absolutely love that I got to kind of bring this to life and tell this dark, twisted tale of Cinderella in a way that you thought you knew but you actually don't. If you got questions, if you got comments, let me know. And we are actually going to highlight this book down for you below so that if you are interested, if you're excited about it, you can get your hands on it. This is YA. It's got some really good swoony content in there. And we are going to take a tour of this book because I'm really excited for it. So we've got this beautiful cover. It does have her name as the title. And we've got this gorgeous chandelier up here. We've got all the sparkly lights from the ball. The chandelier is kind of important in the story. But most importantly, we have her shoe. You can see that it's covered in all these fabulous rhinestones. It's got the big heels, this beautiful dark green color, a little bit of a twist on Cinderella. And it definitely pulls in some of the original Cinderella storylines. Now, as you can see, we've got this very intricate, very unique shape to the shoe so that when the prince slices her foot open, you can see the mark on her foot. So should he at some point see her foot, game over for our Cinderella assassin Cinderella. And so we've got all the good shoe gloriousness on the cover. It extends over to the back as well. We've got even the little chandelier type things, which we're going to see on the inside in a minute. We've got the beautiful uh, blurb for that as well in my socials, because, you know, you got to come hang out with me on social. Inside, we do have the shoe once again. So if you need a good, clean look at that shoe, I got you covered there. You can see the shape of it. You can see everything that goes on inside of there. And we've got these beautiful chapter headers that are all sparkly crystal chandeliers. And I'm going to give you a little secret. I'm actually a professional cover designer, so I did this baby myself. I also hand created every single one of those jewels. Hand created those. It took a hot minute to create these chapter headers for this story. This is dual point of view. So you get both Cinderella, my Cinderella assassin, and Prince Davian's point of view as they are hunting each other down and trying to destroy each other and save the kingdom or destroy the kingdom or whatever it happens to be. And there's a lot of ground covered inside of the story. It is a novella. It's one of my short stories. So it's not going to take you forever to read. You do get the complete story inside of this. But, you know, if you ask me enough times, there might be room for a spinoff. All I'm saying is my fans have talked me into spinoffs before. And so you have the ability to just sit down and knock this out in a couple of hours or in a day or however long you want to read it. But it's a very easy read. Lots and lots of swoon, lots of sass and amazing, amazing fashion, which, by the way, if you need to see is on my website. You should definitely check it out. It's lots of fun. And uh, we've got all the cool, interesting things inside of this twist on Cinderella that you thought you knew her story, but you don't quite yet. We are coming toward the end of our live stream. Now, before we let everybody go, we got a couple things to remind you of, and we're going to hear from our authors one more time. If you've not hit that follow button, now's the time, baby. Make sure you set that follow button and an alarm on your phone because every single Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, we are here bringing you new authors to introduce you to. They get to pitch their books to you. Y'all get to come be the American Idol judges of this and decide if the book is going to be a good fit for you. We've got them all links down below. You can check them out right now. And you do have the ability to request what genres you want to see in our upcoming episodes. Now, we are also live here on the Amazon platform talking lifestyle, beauty and fashion, technology, books, all things that encompass my author life and my social media strategist life where I help entrepreneurs to level up their businesses and make more money all here on the Instagram live platform. So hit that, that follow button because you do not want to miss out on these. And every single Tuesday at six, we're here live with the authors and the book fair live stream. So make sure you are following along. You're bringing your friends to the party every single week and doing all the cool things. If you purchased a book tonight, let us know. We want to shout you out. Um, your bookcases are wanting more books on their shelves. Montana, that is the correct way to think. We like having you here and we like the way that you think. We've got mom of two boys buying more books. That's the way. 
you're here to support the book fair live. I'm so excited. You bought three of the books tonight. Oh, this is so exciting. Um, how can we not buy them? Well, it's very hard, right? <laughs> and we are loving on covers and what everyone is seeing and hearing tonight. So we're so excited that you all are here and that you're joining us for all the fun. Now, if you enjoyed tonight's conversation, we're going to hear from our authors one more time in just a second. Thank you for those stars, y'all. We thank you for the stars. We want to remind you that I do a live stream on Instagram every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern answering your questions and talking other topics. We are on TikTok at 3 p.m. Eastern every single Friday with an open Q&A. You can come hang out with me and ask your questions, get your questions answered in real time. And we go live on YouTube and Facebook to do live book readings, meet authors, have interviews, and all sorts of fun, fabulous things. In fact, there are new videos every single night on my YouTube channel and new posts on all the socials every single day. So if you're not following me at Cam Robinson Books, you're not going to want to miss out on all the fun. And I tell you when I have secret events. So you should come hang out. If you're new, hi and welcome. Come introduce yourself. Before we say goodbye this evening, we are going to bring all of our authors up. We're going to do 30-second pitches on our stories, and we are going to hear one more time from each of our authors so that you can make that final decision if you have not already. Meredith, remind us about the coincidence makers. Thanks so much. This has been so much fun. Uh, okay, so my main character, Amy, she's got a pretty important to-do list. First one, stop a bioterrorism attack on San Francisco. Two, she's got to evade the FBI that's currently hunting her down. And three, she's got to escape the friend zone with her partner. So she's got a lot of uh, invisibility and some other hidden talents that are going to help her out with this, but it's probably going to take more than a coincidence to pull this off. So um, I do have a sequel out to this one already. The third book is in the works. So definitely I would love to hear from you if you've enjoyed this, but uh, check out the links below and uh maybe pick up a copy. Please do. We want to hear if you do. And if you love it, make sure you're leaving a review and coming back to let us know just how much you loved it. Sophia, tell us about your story. Hello. Um, Collision is the first book in Blue Blood of Brothers. It is a cop romance, romantic suspense. It is steamy, steamy, steamy. Don't let your mum read it. Mine is. Um, these are all available on <laughs> Kindle Unlimited. Um, print a book and they follow Callum Miller as they go through the trials and tribulations of a manhunt and there is a lot of forced proximity. There's those steamy moments in the apartment there. Um, if you read Suzanne Stoker, KD Robb, um, sorry, J.D. Robb, um, Jamie Crouch, uh, Kay Bromberg writing in her world as well, this is perfect for you. Absolutely. Binge read on KU, on Kindle Unlimited because I write how I read and I've been reading Kindle Unlimited since... 2010. So that's what these, these hey, books are written for. Hey, tell us all about your story. Time to Wake is your typical girl meets boy. A girl happens to be a soul-devouring Nephilim. When girls starts going, girls start going missing in her neighborhood, of course, her and her band of misfit friends decide to go hunt down the killer when their greatest skills are introversion and blogging. What are you going to do? Besides maybe fall in love. This is a slow burn, big cliffhanger first in a series with the next coming out next month and you can pick it up on amazon in ebook soft hard and audible and don't forget all of these books are linked down below you can be checking them out right now if you have not grabbed your copies now is the time what are you waiting for let amazon know that these authors deserve more credit and more placement on the website so that they can sell more books and write more books for YOU. You can check out Cinderella by K.M. Robinson right now. It is an assassin Cinderella story where she's hunting the prince at his engagement party, but don't worry because he's after her as well. It is full of fabulous swoon, sarcasm, and amazing fashion, and a really snarky fairy god brother who designs all of her tech, her gear, and her wardrobe with our master assassin potentially out to murder more than just the prince and the king. Make sure you check it out to find out what actually happens, who will and will not survive, and what happens when maybe we question some things that we're not supposed to be questioning. Friends, if you enjoyed today's conversation, let us know in the comments. Hit that star button, hit the follow, and buy the copies of the books that you absolutely loved this evening. Let me know what genres you want to see more of in the upcoming episodes. And we thank each and every one of you for joining us tonight for our Book Fair Live. We're here every single Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. We will see you again next week with new authors, new stories, new secrets and surprises. And I might just have some fun things up my sleeve. So make sure you set your alarms. We will see you again next Tuesday for more.